Hey guys, what is going on? This is Anthony or Project Nova Zero. And today I'd like to make a special video on an update on my PS3 collection. Now the one I have right here, this is my personal 60 gigabyte PlayStation 3. I have upgraded it to a 500 gig hard drive a few years ago. And I must say, it is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely no scratches, nothing at all. And this is an original launch PlayStation 3, October 2006. Now, when I say October 2006, I really mean it was made in October, you know, for the November launch. So technically it is a launch version. And I have another launch version, which I'll get to shortly when I show my collection. But just wanted to show this one. This is my personal one. And I personally think the PS3s are one of the greatest consoles Sony ever came up with. Now, sure, PS3 started off at $600, you know, for the 60 gigabyte, and $499 for the 20 gigabyte. I got this one in November, November 29th, 2006. Now, I was about, I was, I was 10 years old. No, I was nine years old in 2006. And you're probably wondering to yourself, well. You're pretty spoiled, you know, you got this yourself and, you know, your parents probably bought it for you because a nine-year-old does not have $599, you know. But the real story was my uncle actually picked one up. He wanted me to go inside the GameStop and see if they had any available. And I went in, I asked, hey, do you guys have any 60 gig PS3s or, well, I didn't say 60 gig. I just said, do you guys have any PS3s available? And they have this one. They had two of them. 120 and 160 so I went and told my uncle and he went down and grabbed it you know we picked it up it was $599 you know the 7% tax and we picked up another controller so we could play together and we picked up Resistance Fall of Man one of my favorite games of all time and you know total that was over $700 it was absolutely crazy and it was funny too because we were just going out to get food from Red Lobster now this is before they were fancy and they were just like a little family diner restaurant and we just wanted, I wanted chicken fingers, he wanted fish, but we ended up getting a PS3 instead. We also got Pizza Hut because we were pretty, well he was broke pretty much after that, but we were both excited to play it. And he gave it to me in 2000, early 2008 because he didn't play it and when he wanted to sell it he went to a pawn shop and the pawn shop offered him $100. First they said 20 and he's like, are you serious, $20? But they thought he meant a PS2, even though he had a PS3 in his hand. And he said, for PS3s, we'll give you $100. Which, in that time, they were, this is late 2007. During that time, they were still going for $500, $400 used, you know? So that was a bit of a grip off. So my uncle decided to keep it, and I used to borrow it from him all the time. So I asked him, hey, can I borrow it? And I borrowed it for about a week, and I was about to give it back to him, and he said, you can just keep it. So that was probably one of the happiest days of my life, because I was a, I was a, um, 2000, I was a 10-year-old with a PS3. You know, that's unheard of. I mean, well, I mean, unless you're really spoiled. But for, you know, a, a lower middle, like a middle class family, it was, you know, it's really rare. People were still playing PS2, and I couldn't really play with anyone because I had the PS3. I also had a Wii. I got a Wii for Christmas, but uh, that's that's for another video. Anyways, yeah. So what's special about the 60 gigabyte PS3 is it has a chip in it called the Emotion Engine, which is also the CPU and GPU of the uh, the PS2. So what that means is this is basically there's a PS2 inside of this PS3. So it natively plays PS3, PS2 and PS1 games. It plays them all native hardware, and that's great. You basically got three game systems for the price of one. Now during that time, PlayStation 2s were still on sale for about $130. Now, yeah, that's a little bit of a big gap between the, uh, you know, the $599 and the $130 for PS2 and PS3, but you were also getting a Blu-ray player, which is another thing. The one we got, it came with a copy of Talgonda Knights, the like Ricky, the, the one Ricky Bobby movie. Wasn't good, I didn't like it, I thought Will Ferrell was all right in it, but it was a free boo, a, a free Blu-ray, sorry about that. Yeah, free Blu-ray, and we got to see the quality difference. 
and we saw it on 720p TV, but we were just blown away by the quality. And we looked online, because we were thinking about getting a second Blu-ray player, and we thought, oh, PS3s are so expensive, instead of getting a second PS3, just get another Blu-ray player. Blu-ray players at the time were, you know, 2007, they were going for $300, $400 still. It was absolutely insane. So when you take into those two counts, the PS2, the PS1, PS3, plays Blu-rays, you could go on Linux, you could go online, watch videos, it was basically a supercomputer. For $599, it's actually pretty affordable. And what's special about the 60 gigabyte that the 20 gigabyte didn't have was it has memory card readers. As you can see, when I look, it looks pretty normal, and it has a little flap right here. Now when you lift it up, there's a uh, there's a compact compact flash, a I believe this is an SD card tray right here. I can't really see. It's either SD or Pro Duo, which is a PSP style memory stick, and it had its on and off, which were touch sensitive, which was really cool and futuristic at the time. It had a slot loading uh, Blu-ray drive, which is also really futuristic because all the older DVD based uh, systems like the well, not the Wii. The Wii had a slot loading like this, but like the 360 had a dated looking like, DVD tray, which could scratch your discs if you move it. Now, the best thing about PS3 is it's all laser, so you can move it any way you want if there's a game in it, it wouldn't break the game, which, you know, it's just awesome. Now, I did open this PS3 up, and I cleaned it out. It was still actually really clean. I cleaned it out, and I got Thermal Compound and replaced it back in early 2015 and it's still going great you know I haven't opened it up since there's no reason to and yeah it's it's been a great system I really love it, it has four USB ports and it's a very nice like the spider-man font it's embossed you know with sterling silver plating and you can feel it and also you can see the chrome the chrome is actually really nice because it just makes it look a little bit more high quality, like a like a really fancy car or something. It kind of remote, it looks a little bit like my car. Like my car is glossy black with chrome trims. I just like it. I think it's a really good style. But yeah, so that's a little bit of a history on my PS3, and uh, I'll show you the other PS3s I have collected over the past probably year and a half because I that's when I really started seriously collecting them. Now. Keep this in mind, the systems I'm showing you, they're not all my systems. And I mean like, I mean like I have more. I have more systems in the back, but I don't want to show all those in the video because they would completely take up the table and they're duplicates. So these are, each one of these are one of their own PS3s and I'm still looking for more, but yeah, so here's the, uh, here's my collection. Alrighty, so I'm sitting down now because I want to be in frame still and I just want to show you all my different variants of the PS3 and uh, how I think I'm going to go about this is I'm going to start off from well I guess I'll start off from the front row to the back row because these ones are more of my recent purchases now this first one here this one's a little bit weird this well this one isn't weird this is the uh, this is one of the other launch 60 gigabyte PS3s I have now, just proving this isn't the one I was just holding, I got that one right here. But this one is a, uh, it's another launch PS3. I got it on eBay for about $70. It was uh, 70 bucks with two controllers and nine games. And the nine games I sold to my friend for 30 bucks because I didn't play them. They're JRPGs like Final Fantasy and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of those games, so I just, you know, threw them for 30 bucks. I knew the games were, like, worth 20 each, probably, 10, like, 15 to 20 each. But I'm not, I'm not going to rip off a friend. I'll just give it to him. I don't care. But, yeah, so this one was $60. It is a 60 gigabyte. And, as you can see, has the SD card tray, chrome trim, and four USB ports. So we'll get that one out the way. The next one I have is a 20 gigabyte. Now this was the cheapest PS3 I got. This one I got for six no 749 
and uh, six dollars shipping. So I won it on an eBay auction. The guy had it listed as a 40 gigabyte version, which is a non-backwards compatible, so people don't really care too much about these. And it also had the yellow light of death. Now, if you don't know what the yellow light of death is, that's basically when either the CPU or GPU overheat and the solder balls become either disconnected from the board or they can join with one another due to the heat. And that in turn will, you know, make the PS3 not work. It just won't turn on and it'll flash a yellow light and that's it. Now, how I repaired this one was I did it, I did it semi-professionally. Um, I bought Flux, which you can buy online. I bought the, uh, what was it, the Reball kit. And I really don't recommend buying that. It's kind of ripoff. I don't even know if they still sell them anymore. But I paid $90 for the reballing kit. And I did a reball by myself. Now, a few years ago, I made a video on a reballed PS3. Unfortunately, I don't have that one anymore. I actually sold it to a friend who needed one because he didn't have any working PS3s. Well, I didn't really sell it to him. I just gave it to him. But, you know, it's whatever. But, yeah. So... This one, seven seven forty nine and whatever six something shipping, and yeah, it's in actually really nice condition as you can see. There's not too many scratches on it, as you can see with the twenty gigabytes. They have four USB ports, but they don't have uh, it doesn't have the chrome trim like the sixty gigs. And I actually really do like this uh, style. I think it's really nice. I, I think the like the best style would have been a 20 gigabyte shell, like a 20 gigabyte shell. If it had Wi-Fi, because the 20 gigabytes do not have Wi-Fi. If it had Wi-Fi, that would be great. And if it had the SD card readers, so basically, if it was a 60 gig with a 20 gigabyte trim, it looked perfect. And I used to have one like that. I did a modification one, but again, <laughs> I ran out of money, so I needed to sell something, so I sold that. And that was unfortunate because I would actually rather get, you know, buy that back from the person. But that's all right. It's fine. I'll just make another one down the road. But yeah, so that one was my cheapest one and also really nice looking. Now, the next one is a little bit of a weird one. This is the weird one that I kind of like mentioned earlier. This one I got refurbished, I think, from GameStop. I bought it. It was for $79.99. It was an 80 gig backwards compatible model. Now the difference between 60 gigabytes and the 80 gigabytes were 80 gigs did not have the motion engine chip. They had another chip, uh, a graphic synthesizer chip that emulated the motion engine. It was much cheaper for Sony to produce, but in turn, it doesn't support 100% of the PS2 library. It supports maybe 80%. And so just imagine it like a semi crappy emulator. There are some games that work on it, but like cutscenes are cut out, the gameplay, there could be no audio, and that's not your game's fault, that's actually the system, because it's, em em nah. because it's emulation just wasn't good enough. But in return, you got an 80 gigabyte hard drive, you got, you know, I think it was, this one came bundled with MotorStorm, but I don't have it, I don't have that anymore. Um, came bundled with MotorStorm, they were going for $500, and for 80 gigabytes, it looks just like the 60 gig game, bonus game, 500 bucks, you couldn't really go wrong with it. And yeah, so let me show you this one. Now, what's weird about this one is even though they, they advertise it as an 80 gig with uh, backwards compatibility, it does play PS2 games, it does have backwards compatibility, it has the four USB ports, like the 60 and the 20, which this one did, but it's it's a SD card door, as you can see, it doesn't open. And I'm looking at it, I'm wondering why. It doesn't it it doesn't have like any of the little dots to help you grip it to open it, but I can see if you if you it is semi-translucent, so if you shine a light through this, you can see it has SD card like readers. Now, I can't access them, and I opened it up. I opened this one up personally, and I checked, and this is actually a uh, this is actually a 20 gigabyte shell, and they took off the black chrome trim. They took that off, and they put a 60 gig chrome trim on it, 
Now, I guess they were doing this when they were refurbishing the system to make it look better and they didn't realize this is a 20 gigabyte housing, but it certainly is a, certainly is really um, unique, I guess you can say, because it does look really nice. It looks like it'd be a really good display piece, you know, if you have it in like a glass window, you have it kind of tilted like this, where it shows everything. I think that would look really clean, so I didn't complain about it, and 79 bucks, you really couldn't go wrong. This was two years ago, so they were still going for a pretty high price back then. They are going for a high price now, especially the 20 gigs, but you can you can find them online probably for like 100 to 130 pretty easily. Some people ask for like 300, 400. Those people are complete idiots. Well, they're not really idiots; they're more con artists because you shouldn't be paying 400 dollars for this system unless like. It's on bidding and it's a brand new system or if it's like a really nice, like my first one, like really nice conditions, almost zero scratches, then I can see why you would pay $400 for it. But a normal 20 and 60, a normal price would be 100 to 130, a 80 gigabyte backwards, you know, $100, 120. But these ones here, these are my three final ones I bought and they are very semi hard to come by. Now, there are more that I'm missing. I'll get to that in a second, but uh, let's go over. So this one is the limited edition Metal Gear Solid 4. Um, Metal Gear Solid 4, what was that? Guns of the Patriots? This is a limited edition system where this was released in 2008 and it came bundled with Metal Gear Solid 4, the limited edition, a kind of dark gray DualShock 3 um, I don't know if I have a, I don't think I have a photo of one, but if I do, I'll show it on the screen like now or something. And it, that was pretty much it. It came with a really cool box. It sold for $499. Now, that was a little bit expensive for 2008 PS3s because it was a 40 gig, but you did get a bundled game and you got this really cool looking system. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, mine is a, uh, it's not in the best condition. There's a really big, deep, dark scratch in there. Um, I mean, it's not an awful condition. It's like a 6 out of 10 condition-wise. But it could be better. It, it really could. And as you can see, the 20 gigabyte, I mean the 40 gigs, they only had two USB ports. I don't know if you can see that, but if you can, it only has two of them. And this one lacked PS2 backwards compatibility. Now, it does play PS1 games, it just won't play PS2. So if you have a PS2 Slim or a fat PS2, you should be fine. But if you don't, then I'm sorry. You're probably going to have to get a backwards compatible or, you know, just deal with having a PS3 only or buy a PS2. Now, I got this one for... The guy wanted $100 for it, and I made him an offer for $70 because it's in really bad condition, like faceplate-wise. And he declined my initial offer, and it sold. And I was like, okay, I'll just search for another one. And they're all going for about $200 to $300, this version, that are in pretty decent condition. And I saw this one pop back up, but he only wanted $40 for it. And I was wondering why. So I clicked on it, and it said that sometimes it turns on, sometimes it doesn't. So I was figuring it was dying, like a dying, like a yellow light of death kind of issue. So I made him an offer for $20 because I just wanted to see if he would accept it. I wasn't expecting him to, but surprisingly, he did accept it. And so I got it. I uh, replaced the board with a working 40 gigabyte board I bought on eBay. And it works great. So my total investment in it was like $35. It was $15 for that board. So it works great, $35. This was my cheapest limited edition PS3. And I'm really happy with it, even though the condition's not the best. It is nice just knowing I do have one in my collection. So the next one I have, this one was uh, pretty expensive. This is a Japanese silver, a satin silver PlayStation 3. Now it's the same thing. It's a 40 gigabyte, so it has two USB ports lacks PS2 backwards compatibility, and also it only plays Japanese PS1 games. It does not play Jap American PS1, just Japanese because of region coding. 
but it does play American PS3 games. Now the problem is due to Japan's different, like Japan, there's a little bit of a difference between button placements between the U.S. and Japan, where Japan to select something it's circle, in America it's a cross. You know, so when you want to select something in the Japanese PS3, you hit circle and that's whatever. But when you're playing American games, if there's an option like let's say in Call of Duty where X is jump and you know circle is prone in America. Well, in the Japanese one, the same game, you put that in there. If you press circle, you're going to be you're going to be uh jumping. You press X, you're going to be proning because they they swap the commands of the buttons. And there's no way around it unless your game has an option where it can switch controls, but still like if you can remap the controls, but still it'll come up as like press cross, even though you know you'd press circle. It's really confusing, and that's why I don't really use the Japanese systems for playing games. I just have them for display. And if you really are set on it and you don't want to play with the Japanese flip buttons, then you can buy an American 40 gig. And the, the parts are literally the same. They're identical. So you can take the parts out of this one and put them in here, and then you have an American board in there, so the, the buttons and everything will work as an American PS3. Now, that's a lot of work, and I really just don't recommend doing that. Just, you know, enjoy the Japanese system. It's fine. It's not like you can't read any of the language because you can set that to English. You just can't set the button placements. But, yeah. Also, um, I bought this one for... $181 with free shipping. Now, that does sound like a lot of money, but you got to realize people in the U.S. are trying to sell these for like $300 to $400. And for someone who can't wait, that might sound a little bit enticing. But I just ordered mine straight from Japan on eBay. It came with the original box, an 80 gigabyte hard drive, and it was, you know, 181 And it came here within a week. So that's actually really good shipping, really good shipping speed coming from Japan. And, you know, it probably costed like $70 for that shipping alone. And it was free for me. So the person probably didn't make much of a profit, maybe like a $100 profit on this. And it's, a, it's just a great value. But yeah, so that's the Japanese silver PS3. And, the net, and this is my final one. This one I really love. It's like my second favorite PS3, I, I guess you can say. This is the Yakuza 3 uh, limited edition PS3. I don't know if you can see it really in the light. It kind of looks like you can. It's very, very glossy. It's a glossy white PS3, and as you can see, it has uh, combat dragons from the Yakuza. Now, this came out in 2009. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention. The silver PS3, that came out in 2007. Just wanted to put that out there. But this one came out in 2009 for the game Yakuza 3, and it was alright in the U.S. Um, Yakuza really wasn't that popular. It still isn't really that popular today, even though it's an amazing game. Um, but it's very popular in Japan. It's like the Japanese equivalent of GTA. And so they actually decided to release a limited edition PS3 for it. And they only made about 10,000 of these. So they're, you know, they're surprisingly, these are more rare than the 20th anniversary edition PlayStation 4s. So when you consider that, it's actually a fairly decent price for what I paid. Now I paid $240 for this. And that came with the system, the cables, a DualShock 3 white controller, uh, and the original box. And the box by itself goes for like $70 to collectors. You know, the uh, the boxes are crazy for these systems. For the 60 gig boxes go for like 50 bucks. 20 gigs, they go for 70. The 40 gigs, they go for like 20. The Japanese 20, the Japanese silver ones go for like 50. And then these Yakuza ones go for like, you know, 70 to $100 because they're so rare. Now, luckily, I actually got one with this. And it was free shipping. And it came in about three to four, like it was like four weeks. So it was a really long shipping time, but for what you get, it was worth it because you got a really nice looking 80 gig system, glossy white, beautiful design. There's not really any scratches. There's very light scratches like in the white region, 
but on the Dragons, there's no scraping, no nothing. It's in perfect condition that way. And the back, um, the back just looks like pristine almost. Well, in the light, you can see some light scratches, but it just looks really nice. It's a very pretty system. 10,000 of these exist today. I don't know if there's going to be more. I don't know if there's going to be less, but yeah, 10,000 of them. And I am definitely holding on to this one because, you know, I know. I want every single PS3. And yeah, 240 bucks. I got this uh, just recently, a few months ago. It came in like three weeks ago, and I just had it on display ever since. Now, there's, th there's a few other ones I'm missing in my collection, and if any of you have one, if any of you have one of these ones that I'm looking for, you know, message me, maybe we can make a deal on them. But there's three systems I'm missing. Two in which I might be able to get in one, no. So the first one is the Final Fantasy Limited Edition PS3. Now, this one, it looks pretty much like the black PS3, but it has a, uh, has like a little like emblem on, I think, the top right-hand corner of the system, and it's a little bit of a different black. Now, this one, it's not really that limited. There was one selling for $90 on eBay, like six months ago I remember but I haven't seen one really pop up since that's one that's one I need to get um, I'm trying to find one for like less than a hundred but knowing how rare it is it's probably gonna be hard finding it for that cheap the second one I'm looking for is the uh, is the biohazard limited edition PS3 which it looks pretty much like a black one again but it has like an emblem on it I'm not really sure how to describe it. Um, I, I don't remember the design on the top of my head. I think it says Biohazard on it. Um, that's the Japanese name for Resident Evil. But yeah, I'll show a photo of it probably. And uh, the third one, it's a little bit of a hard thing to describe. They released a PS3. There's only three of them in existence. Only three. It's a glossy red PlayStation 3, they call the Canada Day Edition. Now, they had a contest in 2000, I believe, 7, 2007 for it. It, came, it was a backwards compatible one also. And it came, there was a one, there was a three, three of them made, so three winners, and there was also 500 limited edition Canada Day PS3 t-shirts. Now, the t-shirts, I, I think, are, aren't going to be really hard to find. I think this one was probably is more rare than the uh, the one I'm wearing right now is probably more rare than the Canada Day, Day Edition because this one was only for developers during the launch of the PS3 and I happened to stumble across and I just picked it up because how rare it is and I'm trying to find a Canada Day PS3 shirt those are you know they're hard to find and the system is nearly impossible because yeah three of them were made. And I don't even know how to how, what kind of value that would have. If it, I feel like the value of a red, an actual official red one, if there's only three in existence, it'd probably be you know close to five to six grand, more than likely, because there's only three in existence. And if you if you get a custom painted one, that's great, but that's not the an, an official one. And just getting an official red one would be amazing. That would, if you have one of those, then you're one of the top collectors for the PS3. Now, I'm a pretty small collector. I have different variations of the PS3. I want more. I don't want any slim or super slims. I want the originals. But, yeah, I, I just don't know if I'm ever going to get that Canada Day one. Because there's only, like, I think I've shown it already in the video, but there's only one. There was only one photo of it that wasn't the promotional photo. And it's in very low res probably like a Motorola flip phone from 2007, took a photo of it. So those PS3s are probably somewhere in Canada, you know, probably very rare, very expensive. They're probably asking like $10,000 for them, more than likely. But one day, I really hope I can find one. So anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little PS3 collection. I'll update it when I do find another. And thanks for watching. Have a good one.